Now that we've defined specific heat and we've used the equation Q equals CM delta T, I want to take a moment to prepare us for the lab we're going to do in our next meeting. Now a point of clarification before we get into that topic. We've been seeing delta values in our equation, specifically a delta T value in Q equals CM delta T. I want to remind you that whenever you do a delta value, whenever you do a delta T, we always do final minus initial. So that means, say, your temperature goes from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. Your final would be 30 and your initial would be 20, so your delta T would be a positive 10 degrees Celsius. If the temperature goes from 30 to 20, well then your final is 20 and your initial is 30, and so your delta T would be negative 10 degrees Celsius. So the sign of having a positive or a negative delta T value is going to be important in our calculations. I want to take time to talk about a calorimeter. The word calorimeter might sound intimidating, but as you can see from a picture, it's basically a styrofoam cup with a thermometer sticking out of it. The plot is in the title here when you look at calorimeter. Calorimeter is a meter for calories, or a way to measure heat energy. And what we're going to be doing in our activity next class is we're going to be taking a hot metal and placing it in room temperature water. Now this room temperature water is going to be in the calorimeter, it's going to be in the styrofoam cup. And styrofoam is used as an insulating material that's going to keep heat from escaping or entering our cup. Everything is going to be contained within the cup. Inside this calorimeter, the warm metal is going to cool down and the room temperature water is going to warm up. The key concept here is that energy is conserved, our first law of thermodynamics. The reason we use a calorimeter is to try to keep any of the heat from escaping the cup. All the heat that is lost by the metal as it cools down will go into the water as it warms up. So let's take a look at a practice problem. And we're going to still use our equation Q equals CM delta T and we're going to rely on those specific heat values from the text. Let's say I put 75 milliliters of water in a calorimeter and I measure the temperature of that water to be 22 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put 50 grams of a metal and I'm going to heat that metal to 95 degrees Celsius. The metal is placed in the calorimeter with the water and the temperature comes to 26.87 degrees Celsius. I would like to figure out what metal this could be. So the key concept when looking at one of these calorimetry problems is the notion of conservation of energy. We are going to have a warm metal and we're going to place that warm metal in some room temperature water. And when the process ends, they're going to reach a thermal equilibrium. Now thermal equilibrium is just a fancy way to say they're going to be at the same temperature. The metal is going to get cooler and cooler and cooler. The water is going to get warmer and warmer and warmer. And once they reach the same temperature, this process will end. If energy is going to be conserved, that means the metal is going to be losing heat. It's going to have a negative Q value. And the water is going to be gaining heat. It's going to have a positive Q value. If energy is conserved, then the heat lost by the metal, the negative Q of the metal, must equal the heat gained by the water. Another way to say that is that all the heat that's leaving the metal is going into the water. Now let's look at our values here. I'm looking for the specific heat of the metal. That's my goal here. Because if I'm going to identify the metal, given the information that I have, I've got to find its specific heat. I know the specific heat of water already. The specific heat of water is 4.184. So I can use the information given to me to find the Q for the water. So the Q for the water is going to equal the specific heat of the water which is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius times the mass of the water. 
Now they don't tell us the mass of the water, they tell us the volume of the water. They tell you that there are 75 milliliters of water. But we know that water has a density of one. It has a density of one gram for every one milliliter. So 75 milliliters of water is equivalent to 75 grams of water. If I'm going to find the heat, I'm going to take the specific heat times the mass times the change in temperature. Now the change in temperature is going to be the final temperature of the water. Now they tell us that the final temperature of the whole process is 26.87 degrees Celsius. And as I said earlier, the process ends when both the metal and the water have the same final temperature. So 26.87 degrees Celsius is the final temperature of the water and the final temperature of the metal. I'm going to say 26.87 is the final temperature of the water minus the initial temperature of the water, which is 22. So there is my Q equals C times M times delta T. When you plug this in, you get a Q for your water of 1,528. And if we look at our units, well I've got grams canceling out grams, and I've got degrees Celsius canceling out degrees Celsius. And so my 1,528 will have the units of joules, which makes sense because we're talking about heat energy here. Now this is more significant figures than my data allows, but this isn't going to be the final answer to my question. So I'm okay leaving some extra sig figs here. We can round off at the end. Now the key concept here is that the Q for the water is going to be the negative value for the Q for the metal. So if the water has gained 1,528 joules, we now know that the metal has lost 1,528 joules, or the Q for the metal is going to be negative 1,528 joules. Which means if I go and plug this information into my C times M times delta D, I can say negative 1,528 joules equals the specific heat of the metal, which I don't know, but we can figure out, times the mass of the metal, which is 50 grams, times the change in temperature of the metal. So now the final temperature of the metal is that of the water as well, right? 26.87 degrees Celsius, minus the initial temperature of the metal, which is 95 degrees Celsius. Now this is going to give us a negative delta T, which makes sense, because the temperature is going down. Now I need a negative delta T because I've got a negative Q. That way my negative signs are going to cancel out and that's going to give me a positive C. Specific heat always has to be a positive value. There's no such thing as a negative specific heat. If you did have a negative specific heat, that means you would take something and stick it into a fire and it would actually get colder. Now I can solve for my specific heat. I can say negative 1528 joules over 50 grams times my delta T. Now if I look at this delta T value you end up getting negative 68.13 degrees Celsius. This negative sign here will cancel out this negative sign here so that's going to give me a positive value. When I plug all this into my calculator, I get 0 0.4485. Now I should be at three sig figs, so I'm going to change that to 0 0.449. And my units here are going to be joules over grams degrees Celsius. And if we take a look at our chart, 0.449 joules per gram degree Celsius tells me that my element's going to be iron.